Hello, I'm Carl Ross of the University of Portsmouth in the United Kingdom. And today I'm going to give you a lecture on using the commercial finite element package answers for analyzing an in-plane plate with a hole in it. It's a rectangular plate, the holes in the center, and subjected to tension. So I'm going to first pick on preferences. I'll pick on structural. There. And I OK that. And then I pick on preprocessor. And pick an element type. And I press on add, edit, delete. And I press on add. And then I pick on a shell 93. Shell 93. Ignore 93. Which I OK. Uh, this element is suitable for uh, answers 11, but not answers 13. In answers 13, I've got to use shell 281, which is slightly different input. And I'll explain that to you shortly. But now I'm going to input the thickness so put real constants. And I press add, edit, delete. And I press add. I press OK. And I put in the thickness. The thickness of this plate is one millimeter. I put it on one node only. If I put it on one node, it assumes the thickness is constant throughout. I next pick on material properties. And I pick on material models. And I pick on structural. I double click that. I double click linear. I double click elastic. I double click isotropic. I put in the the Young's modulus, which is two times ten to the fifth. So I type in two e five, two times ten to the fifth megapascals. And pass on the ratio is 0.3. So I put that in, and I OK that, and that's all I need for the material properties here. So I've come out of this. Now you can't do exactly this with answers 13 because with answers 13 you can't use real, real constants to input your thickness. You've got to use section shell layer add layer and then you put in the thickness of your layer if it's only one layer the isotropic material will only have one layer if it's a composite it'll have several layers and you put the thickness of each layer together with the material properties in the direction of it but you must put this in after you put in the material properties with answers 13 so now i'm going to model it so i pick on modeling and i pick on create and i pick on areas and I'm going to create a rectangle defined by two corners. Now you can see here the x-axis is there, the y-axis is there. So the coordinate, the origin is 0 for x and 0 for y. And the width is half 50 millimeters, so it's 25 millimeters. Because I'm taking the top right hand rectangle. The width is 25 and the height is a half of 25.4 which is 12.7. So I do that, and uh, we uh, take this up there a bit, and we press OK, and we've got the rectangle. I'm now going to draw a circle around here with the origin at 0, 0, so I pick on circle, and I pick on solid circle, and the, uh, the origin of the circle is at this corner here, where the X is 0, and the Y is 0, and the radius of the circle is 4 millimeters. so I put that in. I press apply. That's fine. So I OK that. I'm now going to subtract this circle from that rectangle. So I go down here and look for operate. And there I find operate. So I'm going to uh, uh, speak on booleans. And I'm going to put subtract. And I'm going to subtract areas. And I'm going to subtract this area here. Put apply. From that area, I'll put apply, and there you are, I've removed it, and that's fine. Now what I've got to do is to mesh it, so I look for the meshing tool, which is uh, down here. We go down there, and there's meshing, so I pick on that, and I pick on mesh tool. Now this is the mesh tool uh, table here, and I'm going to set the minimum size of an element to be one millimeter, so I pick on global set, and here I'll put in one millimeter and I OK that that's fine and down I look here we've got areas we've got quadrilateral so that's fine so we can mesh it now so I pick on mesh and I pick on this and then I go back here and I lift this up a bit there and I put OK and I mesh it there's a fine mesh there now I've got to restrain it I've got to restrain it here I've got to make that, these displacements zero along here and these displacements zero along there. 
So what I'll do now is I'll pick on solution, I'll pick on uh, define loads, pick on that, and I'll pick on apply, I'll pick on structural, I'll pick on displacement, and I'll pick it on lines, and I'm going to pick this line here, and set the UX0 there, so I'll go up there, and I'll press apply, I'm going to put UX0, so the X direction is 0 there, and if you are using um, ANSYS 13, you've got to restrain the Z to prevent rigid body motion. So I've restrained it there, I'm not going to restrain it here. So I'll pick on uh, on lines again, and uh, um, I'll pick on that bit there, and I'll move this up a bit there, and I'll put apply, and this time I'm going to put the Y direction zero. It's okay, so I've restrained it there, and restrained it there, and now I'm going to put a pressure along here, I look for pressure, which is there, and I put on lines, and I'm going to pick this bit here, this line here, and I'm going to put the pressure all along there. So we lift this thing up a bit, and we put apply there, and I put minus one, mega, one, minus one megapascal, minus one, and that will be acting all along there. You can see the arrow there, that looks like a point, in it, but it isn't. it's a pressure load all along there, a one megapascal acting to the right, putting it in tension. If I put it in if I put it the other way around, it'll be in compression. So now I'm gonna solve this problem. I've done everything I have to do to do it. So I look for solve. Uh, where do we get solve? There's solve there. I'll pick on that. And I put current LS. I've solved it and I've done it. And it's done it. It's solved hundreds of simplex equations. It's done it in a few seconds and this is only a, a laptop from a high speed shop, not a very expensive one. I've done all that. It's done on the post processor, with the general post processor, and I pick on read results. I'm only going to do the first set, and I'm going to put uh, um, plot results, and I'm going to put uh, deformed shape. I'm going to put the deformed and the undeformed shape, so I press OK, and there it is there. This is the deformed shape, is that bit protruding there? The undeformed shape, is that bit protruding there? The form shape is in blue, the other form shape is in dashed lines. I'm now going to put the stress plot, we're going to contour plot, we're going to nodal solution, and I'm going to pick on a stress, I'm going to pull the stress, and the stress I'm going to do is a 1 meter stress, which is one of the best stresses that one could use for analyzing main plates. And there it is there, this is about 3 there, as it shows there, and this is about 0.25. So this is in compression, and that's in tension, and that's the stress plot, and uh, um, there it is, all finished. So thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.